you haven't done so already, may I ask everybody to take out your cell phones and make sure they are off. These phones have a habit of going off during the service. You don't want to be the one to do that. So even if you're 100% sure it's off, I find that the one that goes off is the one you're 100% sure about. So take all your cell phones out. Double check them, please. Make sure I turn my phone back on, please. Esai na el haharim, meayin yavo ezri. Ezri meyim Adonai o sheshemayim va'aretz. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where will come my help? My help comes from the eternal God, maker of heaven and earth. My name is Paul Kipnis. I'm one of the rabbis at Congregation Orami in Calabasas, California. My colleague, Rabbi Julia Weiss, also here. Nana was part of our congregation, as was Lee and Bert and Carol and her family. It is my honor and privilege to be with you today as we remember and say goodbye to a woman with a beautiful smile woman who taught me even into her last year of life, a woman who would sit right up there in the front row on high holy days and be there and I knew I had to get it right, that she would lovingly guide me through for the next year if I missed. I stand here to say goodbye to a beautiful woman that was loved by so many. Death has taken our beloved Lily. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence there is lamentation. In their tears there is loneliness. Lost in the sorrow of loving friends, hear them, O oh God, and be with them. For Lily's love that unites us in life, in which death cannot sever. For our companionship was shared along life's path, which continues with the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all this and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever-new message of God's nearness. It tells of our kinship with the Creator, in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. I've chosen to read the wise one Ecclesiastes, who in the latter part of his life, a long and good life, reflected upon life and the vicissitudes, the ups and downs, the joys and the challenges. His words were popularized in the 60s and 70s. Here I read Ecclesiastes Kohelet in the original. Kohelet writes, The whole man the eight the whole chafetz tachat ha-shamayim, eight la ledet ve eight la mut, eight la ta'at ve eight la akor natua. For everything there is a season, a time for every experience under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to put that which is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. There's a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. This is the time, not for silence, but to speak, to remember the life and the love and the goodness. So many people who are part of Lily's life, so many who have gone in and out. Remember, Lily was wife to the late Jack, who died in the early 1990s. Mother to Bert and Herbert and Stephen. Mother-in-law to Lee and Sharon. Dear to Tina. 
Marion, Nana to so many, Howard, Carol and Gary, to Paul, to Sharon and Ellie, to Mark and Seema, Judy, Ryan, Melissa and Mark, Michael and Earth, Mark, great grandmother, to Jordan, Michael and Melissa, to Jesse, Elad and Rebecca, to Gabriel and Atticus, to Liat, Griffin, Lila, Asha and Raina. Cared for so lovingly by Carmen for eight and a half years. And we mention also her dear friend Cy Koblenz. So much to say about so wonderful a woman. How does one even begin to capture it all? A story. This from the Talmud. Ta'anit 23a. There's a story about a wonder working, miracle working rabbi named Homi who was walking along and sees a man planting a carob tree. How long will it take for that tree to bear fruit? Homi asked the man. The man said, About 70 years before we see the fruit. Homi, incredulous, said, are you so sure that you'll be alive in 70 years to enjoy that fruit? The man replied famously, When I was born, I found mature carob trees in the world that shared their fruit. Just as my forebearers planted for me, so too I will plant these for my children. This story reminds me of Nana in three ways. First, it's a story about the connection to the past. To know Lily is to know that she held on dearly, closely, to all that came before her. In fact, as we lay her to rest today, she, this moment, closes the book generation. She was the second youngest of five. And just, yes, on Tuesday, her sister-in-law, Ruth Stern, died at 103. Her family is here today and we mourn with them also. Lily was born into a very comfortable family until sometime when a fire in her grandfather's business ruined that furniture business and until the depression hit. They had a home in Deal, New Jersey, a beautiful place. When they moved to Manhattan, they lived on the Upper West Side, on Fifth Avenue. She was a college graduate from Hunter College in New York City. She earned her master's degree, I believe, in child psychology. She was also schooled in Torah. So take all three of those together. We're not talking about a modern woman living in the year 2015 or even 1990 or 1976. This is a woman born back in 1909 on May 23rd, which incidentally is my wife's birthday also. A woman who lived to 105 and a half years old. So if you go back, for her to graduate college, for her to get a master's degree, and for her to ensure that her family taught her Torah, Judaism, just like the boys, I'll share a story about that later, is nothing less than phenomenal. Women didn't do that back then, or weren't allowed to. She made sure it happened in She was smart in the ways of the world. She knew how to invest and 
also made sure that she and her husband were taken care of long way through. In fact, she, towards even to the end, was learning about thinking about how to invest her money. I'm told that she liked treasures, government treasures. <coughs> I remember 
very quickly asked about mine. Remembering my wife's name, most of my children asked about them. She, sitting there, was more concerned about me and how I was doing. At a certain point, the conversation started with me. As you know, you just get caught up in the presence of the club. And so I said, back when I went to visit her. I can't remember her name was Lily. Who was Lily? This is what her great grand told her. She said, Dana, I have to study Torah to prepare for my sermon on Friday night. Can you read the Torah book to me? I said, sure. So I pull out my phone and open up the application that has the Torah. And I start reading to her. Help with math, 